Hi guys, this is Mari Mar with Eco Collective, and today we're going to learn about composting and recycling. Let's start with composting. We're really lucky living in Seattle because we have curbside compost pickup. What works out best for um, my boyfriend and I is to use paper bags that we put all of our compost into. So that's food scraps, paper towels, um, anything that can biodegrade. Anytime I use my hairbrush, I, uh, <laughs> I can compost all my hair, which is really cute. This is like probably the thing I compost the most. This really sad looking avocado. It was ripe yesterday, but I didn't feel like having avocado yesterday. And now, this morning when I was gonna have it, it's rotten. It was like hours. To compost this, you gotta make sure you take off any stickers because a lot of times these things cannot be composted. You can actually take this pit out and you can um, use it to dye like white clothes pink. It's actually really cool. So what I do is I just put it in our bag compost, scrunch it up, and I put it in the freezer. So we also have another composting bin. It's this guy. It's really easy to clean, but we just never take it out. We'll take that out later. Anyway, put that there. So we like to use a lot of brown paper bags um, for composting. So this had um, bread in it. And do you know where we keep these? We keep them in the freezer with the other <laughs> compost bags for when we need it. So if you don't have compost um, or like curbside pickup compost, there's a lot of other things you can do. If you connect with people that, at your farmer's market, a lot of times they might have a compost set up um, at like whatever farms that they're at that you can bring it to them. They'll collect the compost. There's also private services um, in your area and then you can always make your own composting bin. Always try worm composting, which a little bit more high maintenance not everything can be composted Genevieve and I tried it at our store it was it we weren't prepared there's a lot of different options just kind of do some research in your area also another reason why you really want to compost is because there's a big downside when you put biodegradable items into the landfill so like food scraps and stuff because what happens is it gets contained in like a plastic bag you don't get any oxygen to help break down these natural components in your food scraps and what ends up happening is they actually don't break down it releases methane gas which is a greenhouse gas which we don't want so whenever you can utilize your food scraps find composting just try to not put it in um, in the garbage. We're also really lucky in Seattle that we have recycling. It wasn't until I went to college and I talked to someone and they are like, we don't even have recycling. All we have is garbage. And I was like, that doesn't make sense. And they are like, yeah, I know. And I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. That's impossible. You just always have it. And they're like, no, your city has to like set it up and pay for it. And I was like, what? So that was really sad to hear. Always avoid recycling. Like in Seattle, a lot of times our recycling gets shipped off to China. There's been some issues with that where China is no longer accepting our recycling so at this moment I have no idea where it goes so I try not to recycle if I don't have to but some things I do recycle is like my almost daily yerba mate it comes in an aluminum can which is actually very highly recyclable so if I can find a drink that comes in, alu in an aluminum pan um, I'll do that as opposed to glass um, which can take more energy but if I do have something that comes in glass, then I will reuse this as much as I can. So this is one of my sugar wax jars. Um, it's all cleaned out. I can take this to uh, the grocery store and fill up with bulk foods. I can also take this to Eco Collective if I want to and drop it off at their um, jar donations because we also have a bulk section as long as it's glass and it's been cleaned out so there's no odor. Oh my gosh, it smells like nothing. Use your glass when you can. Aluminum, amazing for recycling. If you have one of these um, cans, food cans, um, just make sure to rip off the label because that can't be recycled and you want to make sure it's clean too. Always clean your recycling. You don't want any debris or nastiness on it. And then there's plastic recycling. Plastic recycling can be really confusing. Little tiny uh, 
numbers on the bottom of them. They're these recycling symbols. You can see that there. This one reads one for polyurethane, um, which they say is a very easy to recycle plastic. Um, so this can actually go in curbside plastic. I might actually have to rip off the label. At the end of the day, you do just want to avoid these plastics. You just, you don't want to have to recycle anything. There's a lot of resources on how to read those recycling codes and what they mean and how they apply to your cycling in your area because what can be recycled in Seattle might not be able to be recycled in like Indiana or something. I also have a service here in Seattle. so. A lot of things that I needed to recycle, I couldn't do through curbside recycling. The plastic film was no longer being accepted in our recycling in Seattle, so I got Ridwell. It's this cool service that comes uh, every two weeks, and I can put my plastic film in this, and they will recycle it, which is really cool. As long as they're cleaned out, make sure that they're clean. also allows you to put threads in, so I have a lot of missing socks, I have pants that have huge holes in it that you can't um, try and resell or donate, so anything that I can't, I put in here. And then they also do batteries and light bulbs. So Ridwell is a really great service for me where I can just give them everything instead of having to go to these very specific places to uh, recycle these items. Um, but in your area you should have hazardous waste material, um, you should have metal recycling, um, paper recycling, so there is, it might take more work. And then lastly, I wanted to show you, this kills me. So there's still, I still get mail. A lot of times they'll send mail with this stupid little clear thing. And so what you have to do is you have to rip this out before you can recycle. So always be looking for the plastic in your recyclables, like a carton of milk that's lined with uh, plastic and that can't be recycled because it's too thin um, and it's going to contaminate your recycling it can contaminate the compost so be very aware of these little things we have a lot of resources on our website and you can also look up um, your waste management um, your garbage uh, service and they'll also have a lot of resources on what can be recycled what can be um, composted and what will be landfilled i hope you guys um, got some information from this, learned a little something or other. Um, maybe you'll start storing your compost in the freezer. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. And um, happy recycling and composting.